Today on Fresh Dev, we're going to be talking about creating your own options panel, the settings API, and more. Stick around because this is when the wheels really start to turn. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fresh Dev. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Scott. Scott, it's always a pleasure to see you, especially in this wonderful adventure <laughs> of WordPress Plugin Development 101, part five, right? Yeah, part five. moving along here. Yeah, moving right along here. This is the show where we take some of that 101 basic, basic, right? <laughs> uh, for lack of a better word, WordPress development. Try to help you out a little bit. What are you struggling with? That kind of thing. Uh, check us out, SlocumStudio.com. And in this episode, uh, we're going to dive into a lot, right? So we're going to try to move it along as fast as possible within the blog post. Uh, if you're seeing this before the blog post comes out, because sometimes that happens, we'll be referencing the blog post that has all of our code um, that we're using in this example plugin uh, to help you move along with this stuff. So we're going to say a lot of things and highlight a lot of things. But we're not going to really dive into everything specifically because we have limited amount of time with high definition video. That's so do right. hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with us. We're at 1,200 fans. We want to hit 10,000. If you like what we're doing, go ahead and hit subscribe. Let us know in the comments. So let's dive in to creating an options panel uh, within our WordPress plugin. Um, two links that we'll hit right off the bat, adding administration menus and the settings API off of the codex. Very good super, resources. Super important mm -hmm. um, that you get connected to this because what that's going to be giving you uh, our some how-to stuff, some good fundamental stuff. And we're just going to talk a lot about uh, diving into the settings API uh, from within WordPress. And that's going to be uh, very important for you to be uh, familiar with. So Scott, why are we creating creating a settings and options page for our simple little plugin? Okay. Well, we want to give the WordPress admins a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of customization. So uh, if you remember last episode, we started to create our share button uh, plugin and we referenced filters and actions. Uh, we'll give them an option this time to go ahead and just a simple option, but uh, hide the share buttons on pages. So they'll show on every other post type, but except for pages. So that's what we'll do today. Just gives, uh, you know, them that little bit of flexibility and, right. you know, could be a lot more, could be a lot right. less. So Sometimes I mean, you don't even need a, a yeah. settings page. I mean, if, you're, if your plugin is, is really just maybe tweaking something that WordPress is doing from behind the scenes, um, you know, very rarely do I install plugins that don't have a settings panel or options. Um, but hey, if your plugin is so super, super easy and it just fixes that one thing, yes, um, then you probably don't need a settings page. But... Chances are you might, and we're going to talk about two or possibly three ways of adding that plugins options page. Okay, so uh, what we're going to focus on with our plugin plugin is the function called add options page. That actually adds uh, a sub page underneath settings in the WordPress dashboard. Um, That's if somebody's already familiar with you know you you log correct. into the dashboard, you go under settings, and you have all your default WordPress settings, and we're going to put our little. Right. Plug-in code right in there. Right at the bottom of that Sweet. list. Yep. Um, there's also two other ways. That's why we say maybe three. Um, add menu page and add sub menu page. And those, uh, respectively, you can create your own menu option on the left-hand side of the dashboard or your own sub menu, let's say like under tools um, or media, mm -hmm. depending on what your plugin is. You get to put your cool doing. little icon there on the yes. left-hand side. That's All right. right. That's awesome. Um, both ways uh, do require you to specify the following. Um, you need a page title. Um, which is the text that's going to be displayed in the title tag of the page, a menu title, what's that menu option going to say um, on the left-hand side or under settings in our case, uh, capability, uh, what uh, capability does the user need to have? Uh, do they have to be an administrator to see this page? Do they have to be just a contributor? You can go ahead and specify that. Uh, and the last required option, uh, parameter rather, is a menu slug. Should be unique and have no spaces in it. Um, you know, and, and something, uh, again, referencing your plugin. Mm -hmm. um, in our case, we'll do like SDS share options or something like that. Um, and uh, an optional parameter, but usually I'd say 99% of the time required will be a callback function. And this function actually handles the display of your page. Uh, and, and all three of these ways do require that. Sweet. And uh, before we 
uh, dive into the rest of the stuff. Where does all this code go? I'm in the mindset of having my canvas open. If I were plugging away, listening to this show and all the other episodes, I want to know where this code's going. So where's it all going? It's going to go in, in our case, the plugin class file that we're creating. Um, we remember in episode two, uh, we talked about different ways to structure your files. You could have multiple directories, a single directory, a single file. Um, in this case, we'll probably have just one single class file that does all of this since it's a fairly simple plugin, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll put it right in that file. And like we discussed back in episode two, this is all within the code of our own plugin. Right. That's so correct. if you're like, hey, you know, Professor Scott, where is this all going? You're not you don't have to look within WordPress. This is in our own little nice cubby hole of our plugin code. That's correct. Sweet. And I do want to make a note. We're going to reference. Uh, we talked last week about hooks, actions and filters. We're going to actually hook into the admin init and admin menu hooks to get these uh pages to display correctly. Tremendous. So first step uh, of setting up our little options panel. We, got, we have our, uh, you know, our, uh, our page created, um, and now what we need to do is we need to actually register settings. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, in this case, we can register a setting, give it, a, give it its own name, and a sanitization callback, which basically um, you can go ahead and filter the data that users enter, make sure there's no malicious code, anything like that in there. Um, the regist register settings function does require a couple of parameters, um, an option group, which is just going to be a group name that you come up with, an option name, uh, which is, again, a name that you're going to create, and then the sanitize callback function, um, which is past all of the data that the user may, may enter in. In our case, our checkbox for hiding on pages mm -hmm. is going to be sent through this function. So, so that's the option, that that's the little settings we're going to have in our options panels. We're going to we're building our little share this plugin and then our option is going to be hide this from pages. Yes. It's going to display on posts, but it's going to be hidden on pages. And that's the little check mark that we're going to have. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're registering your settings, this is the stuff you want to think about. What settings, what different options are we going to have here for our plugin? Yep, that's uh, right. Um, so, you know, you'll, you'll think about that. You want to keep um, all of your setting sections and fields, which we'll talk about in just a second under the same um, setting that you name in your register setting function. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about, you know, kind of adding these sections and fields. Sections will be optional, so I do want to hit on it, but we're, gonna, we're not going to register a section for this, in this case. Um, in our example, we're not going to register. In our example, because okay. uh, we're only going to have one option. Um, if we were making like an SEO plugin uh, with Google and Bing and Yahoo Webma uh, Webmaster meta tags, we could, you know, register... Uh, a, a section, but we don't really need it. And these are case. sections that are within the code or actual visual sections like on the screen? Actually, both. Both. Um, we're going to code them and visually they'll display on the screen underneath one main heading. Got it. Um, so just to, you know, kind of outline this, the add setting section function um, groups, a, uh, uh, it creates a group of settings um, that you can see on the WordPress settings pages. Um, this function requires an ID, just a unique ID. Very that you similar to the first with. section, right, of that we that we declared. Um, yeah, kind of. Uh, our adding our uh, page menu, it, yep. it's similar to that. Um, title, what do you want to call the, the uh, title of this section? The callback, again, the function to output the section content, and what page you want to display it on. You, If you recall, we actually created a menu slug um, in our adding uh, ad addition of the uh, settings page, right. and uh, we want to reference that slug in this uh, instance. Sweet. So we got our settings section if we need it. Again, we're going to skip over that for our example. Now we need to go ahead and add the settings fields. This is kind of where you get to the real meat of the settings API. This is now where we're going to create that checkbox and the label that says hide on pages. They check it off, save the changes, and now our buttons are, you know, are not shown on pages. Very similar to add settings section. There's a couple more uh, parameters here. But um, this one's called add settings field. You'll go ahead and you'll create a unique ID, a title, a callback, um, which actually outputs the HTML. In this case, it's going to be an input. You know, could be text, could be a checkbox. In our case, it's going to be a checkbox. Um, what page this should be added to? Again, referencing that slug that we talked about before. Um, and if you have a section, if you did create a section, you could pass in the name of that section here. This field will get added underneath that section. Um, and then any additional arguments you might want to pass in to the callback function. Awesome. Now, 
real quick, how is this? How are we defining checkmark, checkbox, dropdown, text field? Good question. What we're going to do is in our callback field, we're going to need to know a little bit of HTML. It's going to be a standard input box if you are familiar with HTML, and we're just going to specify the type. In this case, it's going to be type equals checkbox. Gotcha. Could be type equals text, number. Um, you could create a text area um, element, and for a drop down, you would create a select uh, or an option uh, drop down. So I think what I think w what the first time WordPress developer out there might be thinking is. Hmm, this isn't that bad. Like I, I'm setting, like I feel like all I'm doing is setting up the lines in the road, and WordPress is gonna take care of some of that other extra thinking that I don't like have to think about, which is great. Uh, I think it makes it so powerful. Yes, definitely. Um, awesome. Now, how do we make that page come to life? Okay, so we got all of our settings registered. Remember the page we first created and we added to the settings. Um, just going to go through a list of, of items here that you might want to include on your pages. It's really a good idea to include most of these. Um, you want to wrap your content in a div with a class of wrap. A div is just a division of the page. An HTML element um, with a class of wrap, and that's what WordPress uses, uh, and it will format that nicely. Um, the next thing you can do is include a screen icon. This could be either a custom icon that you make, not um, the same icon that you talked about when adding a menu page. This is actually a different icon. For instance, if you go to settings in WordPress, you'll see there's a little icon next to the page I'm go title. To right now. All right, sweet. Um, so there's a little icon next to the page title, and you can go ahead and either create one or you can use a built in one like the general options one. And Matt's got the icon right there. It's on pretty much every page of the uh, dashboard. Um, after that, you'll want to include a, a page title. Usually, it, uh, this is enclosed in a H2 tag or a heading 2. Uh, after that, optionally, you could include a description for your options page if you feel that it's necessary. You might want to put this in a paragraph. <clears throat> uh, the next one you can include uh, is a function called settings errors. This will let your users know if they have any errors in, in any of the settings. Um, That's you know. probably pretty important that people include that right settings yeah errors. yeah it, it'll let them know if something went wrong when when saving the settings and whatnot and you can create your own error messages if if gotcha. you know you see fit that's a little bit more advanced um, but definitely something good to include uh, as far as the form goes we do need an html form to send this data to wordpress uh the back end of wordpress we're going to create an html form just like you normally would using the form tag and we're going to have our action actually post to options.php and this is a file within WordPress core that will actually handle all of these options because we registered them through the settings API uh, within this form we're gonna go ahead and call a function called settings field fields sorry settings fields plural and this function um, you're gonna pass in the name of your setting and it's gonna go ahead and just you know create some of the hidden input stuff that WordPress needs to, to validate that the user did submit these options. And to actually get the page to display all of your fields, we're going to call a function called do settings sections. And you're going to pass in the name of your setting that you registered before, and that's going to output all of these fields. In our case, we're just going to have that one checkbox that says hide on pages. Let me guess what's next. The submit button. That's the right. The almighty we're, submit button. We're all done. <laughs> we're at the end. We do need to submit it somehow. Um, WordPress includes a function called submit button, and it will actually output a button that you can submit the form or the, the options with, and it will format it, that nice blue button that you see when you're creating a post or saving other changes. That will output uh, That's tremendous. that button there. Well, look, if, if the wheels aren't turning yet of, <laughs> of the power that you are going to possess when this uh, series is done... Um, I don't know what to tell you because I know my wheels are turning. And so let's take a look at the summary of, uh, of all this stuff. We, you, if you're the person at home listening to this and going along with it as we're speaking, you've got your important links that we mentioned above, especially mm -hmm. getting familiar with the codex and uh, the WordPress API, settings API. Yep. Um, you decide on what those options are going to be, much like we decided on what our plugin was going to be. Um, we register these settings. We then add settings sections if needed. Mm -hmm. um, and then we add settings fields to the sections. And then we render the whole kit and caboodle, right? right. We render it. We make it active. Um, and then we do the validating 
uh, of the settings, make sure that, hey, if this is required, that has to be, you know, yes. uh, you know, this whatever, either if you're make, building like a slider, like, hey, it's 60 seconds when the sl or six seconds when the slider moves, that needs to be filled in, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then after existing in new functions to check the options. Yeah, so what we want to do now, we have these options. And if you remember last week, we hooked into the content filter to yep. actually output our, our share buttons. What we want to do now is we have to go back and actually modify that function a little bit. We need to check if the hide on pages option is set. And if it is, we're, we're going to say, no, we don't want to include it on pages. So we do have to go back. Just keep in mind, you may need to modify some of your existing functions or when you're creating new functions, um, you want to keep in mind these options that you've created because you can reference them and then output your whatever it is you're outputting, in our case, share buttons uh, accordingly. So um, something you want to definitely keep, a, keep an eye on. That's pretty awesome. So questions so far? I'm sure you might have a lot of them after today. You can take a look at the code that we've provided with you, uh, to you uh, and make sure it all makes sense. Drop us a comment in YouTube or on the site. Shoot us an email, something like that. Go ahead and hit subscribe on YouTube because we want to hit 10,000 fans. Check us out at our website, sloganstudio.com, uh, slash subscribe to join the mailing list. Do you have other questions about WordPress? Do you need WordPress help uh, outside of this? Let us know. We're always available for you. Um, thanks a lot, and we look forward to our... Do we have any insight to what show number six might be? Um, you know, we could maybe take a look at sprucing, sprucing up your options panel, kind of making it look better. Um, also, maybe we might add a custom short code. That'd be maybe pretty cool. they could put the share buttons anywhere they'd like within a post. That's awesome. So if there's something that you want to see coming up after this, do let us know. We appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks.